So, so tell me more about this uh, Digimon module you kind of have. Oh, uh, it's not something that I made. It's something I, I uh, yeah, yeah. backed on Kickstarter. And as, from what I remember, because it's been a long time, it is a. It's called Animon. Uh, it's an indie RPG, completely its own system, nice. where you design your own chosen child and your own Digimon partner. Well, Animon partner. <laughs> I see, I see. Shit, I always wanted to be a chosen child. It's like being adopted, oh, yeah. but with Digimon. I see here you got animonstory.com. Yep, that's it. Nice. nice. Oh, they're cute. <laughs> Dude, it'd be, you know, that's isekai done right. You know, like a oh, yeah. isekai before isekai became like a, the big thing. And like, even then there were still other things copying it, like Monster Rancher when they had an anime. Dear God, monster. Ever since I started playing D&D, I've wanted to be in a Digimon game. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I can agree. Uh, I mean, I'm big on Isekai myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would like to, to run an Isekai campaign where everyone plays themselves. I listen to a lot of lit RPG books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they kind of hit that Isekai vibe for me. I've read Overlord four times and <laughs> end. and slime tensei dude i almost i'm almost done reading the solo leveling manhwa <laughs> well how's that going because like the anime it's has really so kicked off cool. hard like it's bringing people into it even my it's wife is cool. down for solo leveling and i'm just like dude look. season two got uh greenlit i guess yeah no doubt like uh, it kind of blew up the industry for a little bit everyone's like oh hey solo leveling is so great hey look here you need a solo leveling campaign actually that's the thing solo leveling is perfect for a campaign it really is you're able to have a modern setting with all of these mm-hmm. magical fantastical elements you can do away with race requirements and just have people mm-hmm. take whatever stats and a feat that they want Going into dungeons is literally like... Yeah, like it's literally a job. So it's like, okay, cool. Uh, we're going to this dungeon. And then like uh, some people that are also just as powerful of a, as us are decided that they're going to murk us. Uh, oh, fuck. Now the, the, the only issue with that is you would have to create a situation where they're able to become stronger like you know some yeah well, like you, you know, need to alter the lore because yeah. he's the only one who can get stronger yeah i, I mean it, it's your own Unless setting get, at this mm, point like i don't want to spoil too much i mean but... uh gate uh that that anime where like <laughs> uh, it, you know they had the earth the, the the defense force and the militaries going into the gates yeah. they're like whoa it's a there's dragons and elves and goth lollies okay shoot them Shoot him! <laughs> that was gate. Yeah, man, that was just no shoot him. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like they should have gone more into the military aspects instead of like, mm-hmm. oh hey, we're going to follow this protagonist who's a total weeb. See, dude. You know? Okay, so I've been kind of I watched uh, uh, Kaiju Kaiju number, number eight, eight, and like that is a really good way. I feel like total leveling could uh, like make their hunter stronger, right? create like the battle suits using like monsters yeah. and they kind of do with like the weapons and stuff yeah, I mean, it's essentially stronger that. with items and like yeah that's yeah, cool that's really the only way that they do get stronger and i guess you could have that be yeah you know, uh, the uh, fixed power once you uh get going is kind of weird to me but like yeah, especially if like how do you determine what rank you know your party is or like what rank an individual is but it's not the worst thing ever i mean if you think about no. it uh, your individual combat skills can be like you could be a powerful person, but still a fucking moron. Dude, yeah, you could have like a party mm-hmm. of like E and D rank fighters, and then someone rolled to be like an A rank healer. <laughs> like <laughs> that well, would be interesting. Yeah, to me, it's like the Master Roshi and Frieza. Frieza has no technique, but he's raw power. He was born better. True. Roshi uses intelligence Those technique. Yeah, and that's exactly how that would go. I, if I was to run this kind of campaign, I would do away with the okay, you're just born out. You're just like outright, like whatever you are, you are your own level cap because that that's trash. There's no character growth there. So, I mean, well, what what's yeah, the, what are they saying for uh, soul leveling as a setting? You're like okay, uh, 
So only one guy gets a character arc. Yeah. It's, it's like all you awaken is an E class. You're you're trash. Like <laughs> pack it pack it in. Have fun fucking, in the office. Uh, I'm not opposed to the ranking system per se, because like with traditional D D, you have a kind of uh, four tiers of gameplay tier one tier two three and four mm -hmm. and like uh tier one's like okay level one to five that's a you know a tier one adventure and then you get into like a tier two okay that's a, a five to ten that's a little bit more difficult you're facing different kinds of things that really make the game and like as a dm running different tiers of gameplay are fundamentally very different all right mm-hmm and like systematically for like a like a solo leveling setting if you're a party of e and d rank hunters you wouldn't be going into the higher rank gates you wouldn't be having that higher challenge like yeah, it would just be the same. Legally, mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah. well, i could see you subdividing it into uh like say uh bits of like three so it's like yeah. uh, you go a a b c d e and then like uh, the last two levels are like s class well, that's kind of how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is how. So I, I didn't read a lot of solo leveling because I didn't love it, but maybe because I couldn't remember anyone's name. <laughs> well, Korean names tend to be like, uh, you know, they blend. Like, dude, uh, maybe it's just uh, my American uh, mm -hmm. ness, but it's just like uh, when you're like Sanji yeah, Wu and just like uh, <laughs> you know uh, Jin Wu is just like uh, Ho Win, and it's just like. Dude, this, the, these names like they kind of amalgamate together in my mind. And I've read a lot of ma manhwa through uh, don't, Webtoon, don't get me wrong. Like, which is like, so, 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 there's like <laughs> subtle differences between names. And like yeah. sometimes it, it's confusing. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Well, <laughs> I, I think it may be sort of like the culture exposure bias. Like just mm. not to keep looping back to Digimon, but there's Gokumon and Gokumon. Mm -hmm. And I can tell the difference mm -hmm. between the two. Yeah, it's just like maybe maybe now that we're seven minutes in, we should run the end. <laughs> I don't hear Look, it. You don't. But it's not solo leveling if you have a. Ah, uh, come on. Let's I'll edit that shit in after the show. We, we really should have oh. checked that. Okay, you can play it before. I... <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> D did I screw something up? Welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, oh the God. talk show that brings you monsters, news, and home. Oh, home. what the fuck? My audio was low the entire time, and no one told me. It sounded fine. It sounded fine for me. Does it sound okay now? Yes, yeah, sounds the same. Uh, it's probably because oh, Libsyn does the, the uh, auto gain. So, like, my stuff was low for no good reason. Well, welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows. You know, wait, wait, show uh, tell me if you hear this. Find things <laughs> we do. No, no, you don't hear that? Okay. <laughs> nope. Well, we can't troubleshoot everything. That... No. After a month, we uh, haven't figured out our path. <laughs> yeah, we took a month off, you know, and we stumbled and fell right out of the gate. Ain't shit. Life really takes you. All right. Well, I am your host, Orion, and with me, as always, is my co-host. I am Sam. Happy to be back. Sorry for the break. <laughs> Life really uh, gets in the way. <laughs> well, yeah, we see that you're in a, a new room. You're all fully moved yeah. in. It looks nice and whatnot. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, with us today, we have a guest and uh, someone we've been talking to for a while now. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. My name is AJ, the DM extraordinaire over at twitch.tv slash choose underscore your underscore role. Annoying name, I know. Well, you know what? It It's catchy. Choose your role. Like... Oh, yeah. Um, is we I randomly just came out with a sign out sign out phrase and the minute the camera cut everyone seemed to like it yeah <laughs> it, it's hard it's always a good catchphrase you know yeah it's always like thank you for turning in something reminding them something involved with the session and choose your role carefully ah that's good that's good yeah i like that choose your role <laughs> 
Yeah, it the amount of time I had to spend to find a channel that wasn't that already was that did not already have that name and was big, so I wasn't ripping. Yeah, I'm surprised like we were able to get this name. That's my wife call. <laughs> Just ignore me while I ignore her, okay? <laughs> Just yeah, I was definitely surprised that Dungeons and Dragons wasn't taken. Mm-hmm. For I mean, for our Star Wars show, uh, no one took Hollow Chronicles. Oh, oh no, I, mean, I, I was wrong. About... It's even worse. Worse than the wife calling. Oh, no. Your Is mother? your doctor? Uh, my daughter. Ah. Uh, you see, my... IRS? Uh, no, my daughter has inherited this uh, psychotic uh, thing from my wife where she will call spam people into oblivion. Oh, Jesus. So I have no choice but to mute my my entire phone for the greater good. For the greater good, yeah. Oh, I get... I, my phone has been silent for actual years. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever heard my ringtone. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what it is. I've been through three phones without mm. it. You, you know, Sam, recently, when it comes to phone calls, you have saved my ass a lot lately. Uh, Happy to hear you. Well, the, the thing is, like, when, when uh, people call and they want money from Orion, I, I answer the phone. Dungeons and talk shows. This is Sam. <laughs> and, nice. And they're like, oh, sorry for, sorry for bothering you. Oh, I guess we have the wrong number. <laughs> You're damn right. You shouldn't be calling into a podcast. Well, yeah. Unless you're calling our voicemail. Unless they're calling the voicemail, which we now have. I am so happy about that. Oh, my God. What a transition. I'm so good at this podcasting thing. <laughs> but better than me, dude. <laughs> I still hesitate when I talk. Um, and, like, I can hear it when I re-listen to an episode. I'm like, Orion, please stop hesitating. But uh, is you going to put the number in the description? How do we want to do this? Uh, I think I'm going to leave it in the description and let people know at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. But for anyone who does want to call in, leave their nerd ideas, rants, or questions, mm-hmm. or, or really anything uh, you got uh, going on up in that nerdy mm-hmm. head of yours, it's 513-570-4443. That's right three fours and a three hey. damn that's mnemonic and shit nice the only thing i would say probably no eating you know while talking try to you know not have music in the background <laughs> if you play it on the show you don't want to get copy you know? yeah. um try to keep it under like two or three minutes <laughs> i think it actually has a two minute cap oh nice nice but yeah we would love to hear from whoever Absolutely. But speaking about hearing from people, AJ, why don't you tell us more about your show? Okay, so uh, I used to have this written out, but hmm. my show is it's it is 5e. It is in a custom setting that I have made uh, from the ground up that I've been working on since 2018. 2018. And uh, if I had to summarize the show, it's a lot of talking a lot of exploring the world and social interacting with a high attention to detail. Mm. I love the minor details of everything. Mm. Uh, for example, one thing I hyper encourage is you is like the toolkits that most people ignore. Mm. No, those get used often. Dude, I love toolkits all the time. And that's actually something that me and my dad are like really into when it comes to D and D in general, because mm. like you, we feel that they're underutilized. It's just such a, like, dude, yeah. if, you, if you got a character that's got carpenter's tools, boom, you, you have a way of looking like a, like a door, for example, uh, or a window. And you're just like, I can say from personal experience, I used to work as a glazer and I've done a lot of construction stuff in my life. So it's just like, I look at a door or a window, I'm like, dude, I could take it apart here, here and here. And all I need is this one tiny tool to do it. And it's just like, that kind of detail. Yeah, it, it opens up the role play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we don't even, it's not even the stuff for that. Like, they just make things, sell them, and run a business. Yeah. It, it does like, happen. I have this book that gives an actual list of everything that's in every tool and two features you get from having it. Like, Ooh. brewer's tools can make potions better because they, they're just a little bit better extending it. Right. All right. 
Uh, you should send that to me at the end of the show because that'd be very fun. Because I know that our, our players like to make mm-hmm. stuff and they have big so plans for that. So I really want to kind of reward them mm-hmm. for that. Fucking Nitro. Yeah, like my, my character personally has a ton of tool proficiencies and yeah. is a crafter salesman. Like You have an obscene uh, amount I... of proficiencies in tools. So there's a class you might like then that I know about. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is my favorite class of all time, and I have and I have over thirty that I have at my disposal. Ooh, jeez. Oh yeah, uh, it is called the Craftsman from Baldur's <laughs> Fire of Secrets. You are just proficient in every toolkit at once, no matter what, and you have an all-in-one kit. Oh wow, dude! Yeah, it's the ultimate Leatherman. <laughs> It's about so this whole everything. gimmick is it does not get a lot of class features, but what it can do is it can modify weapons and armor for everybody. Ooh, okay. ah, I like that because then you can just like if you multi class that a little bit into uh, say Artifice. like an artificer, boom, the supreme artificer. It, it honestly it makes artificer irrelevant. Oh, yeah, it makes it completely irrelevant. Damn, I still it can like make it. its own magic items. Uh, I had armor that made me resistant to fire and i could cause it to explode on a whim (laughs) i feel like that's one of those things where the how overpowered it is depends on how much of an engineering degree you might have (laughs) oh yeah that and in money like this class requires money to modify weapons Mm. so if you're in a low income kind of campaign then you're not that busted Mm. true so really, it's just a matter of what the monetary flow for the party is, yeah. and the DM yeah, can control that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's, it's a lot of res- control, if the DM yeah. controls resource management. Then you'll be fine with it. Because I I did play him broken, twenty one AC at level four. Oof, damn. He gave me plate. Dummy gave me plate armor. Yeah, you're also proficient with every single weapon and armor. You give that's that a little much. Weapon. I mean, like. You make- <laughs> familiar or something <laughs> they get enough that's the thing they get those proficiencies and nothing else <laughs> they yeah. they're just proficient yes the they're just good at things like trades. they they don't get oh they don't get any like utility features or nothing it's all in the equipment no spells or anything like none that? of it they are 100 percent equipment based Damn. so if say your dm takes your stuff they're like well, iron man yeah your character is kind of hooped with that stuff nice. okay I, I do like that because I love characters where I have to be resourceful. Like, mm-hmm. in one of the upcoming campaigns, like uh, if I get a chance, I want to play a rogue that's purely just a utilitarian. Like, okay, I got to make the stuff that I need, or like maybe a fighter. Mm-hmm. It's just like you got to come up with your own creative ways to fight, mm-hmm. like an improvised fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, because it's just one of those things where I've traditionally always loved the utility and the creativeness that comes with a caster, but you can get a lot of uh, creativity out of just like, okay, what items do I have on me, and how can I Rube Goldberg this into uh, some kind of masterwork? (laughs) How do I home alone this dungeon? Yeah, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, Kevin McAllister was really the, the, the blueprint. Another Crazy. class you might like from the same book then is the investigator. They just get like little trinkets. That's the closest thing they get to spells. Interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. Oh yeah. That that book is a godsend. I love that book. Nice. I'm always a big fan of homebrew cuz like a lot of people just play their games straight and that, that's perfectly fine, but where would we be as a D&D community without a little homebrew? Uh, mm-hmm. Doing the same five campaigns over and over and over again. Yeah, mm-hmm. can't have that shit. You can mix it all together into one thing. The generic realms is where the, you know, the generic realm is the place to be. Can't wait to visit the generic realms a little bit later. <laughs> Dear God, uh, I'm actually working on a purposefully generic uh, campaign book. Oh yeah. So, awesome. uh, you know the starter kits like. Ice Spire Peak, Storm Echo Isle, etc. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I found them lacking, and my first thought was, "Well, I'm going to do that better for free." There you go. Oh shit! He caught Wizards of the Coast lacking, <laughs> and now he's going to show them up. Oh yeah. So basically, <laughs> what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put online for free. It's going to have maps, characters, quests, the setting, everything you need. Mm. 
Nice. I, I'd, I'm not big into paying for this hobby. Neither am I. Uh, so I think it should just <laughs> yeah, be Yeah, me either. Five no, e economy. God, God bless 5e e tools. Oh, yeah. 5e e tools is, like, the best thing. Because, like, there's some... I, I use it mostly because, like, I do have a bunch of books because... Uh, I worked a good paying job one summer and mm-hmm. bought a bunch of books because there was a place nearby that sold a bunch of them. Makes sense. And it's just like, okay, now that I got the books and I know roughly what they have, I go to 5e tools and it's just like, I, now I know where to look for the things that I need. And then it's just faster. Uh, I, I definitely also had a good paying job for a summer uh, while I was in the middle of college. And what I would do is I would go invest in a homebrew Kickstarter once per paycheck. Mm, that's a really good idea. <laughs> well, like so then years later, a bunch of books just show up at my door. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, because Kickstarters take forever. It's brilliant. It's yeah. like a, you know, a present surprise for your future self. Set it, forget it. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it, it. it is the D&D equivalent of a crockpot dinner. That. Just oh yeah, I have T-shirt. <laughs> but it's so, like I mean, if I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Heliana's Guide to Monster Hunting, I don't think so. I have. I I, I have. It's a thick boy. Hmm. Like I would call just the book an inch and a half thick. Dude, that's mm. awesome. Yeah, that just shows up in my door. I'm like, oh cool, this happened. <laughs> Dictionary. Oh yeah, it's got uh, monster fights. It's got a whole class. Uh, nice. race of, of that, chicken people nice <laughs> chicken they can people, all huh? polymorph into a chicken mm. that's what the world needs it's also got pangolin people and i love that <gasps> oh you, you got sam's attention uh, no, there no. <laughs> sam, sam i'm gonna let me pull it up while we talk and i'm just gonna send you an image of the cover art for them please do i love them <laughs> i love them already i think uh, in one tall. of our early episodes like we made like a pangolin girl as a uh, as the cover art for one of our episodes. I think Spectacular! We did. I love pangolins. Such a nervous. They're bunch. my favorite animal. It's not something you'd expect to be uh, your furry waifu, but <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite way I've ever seen them described is: here's an animal that's very nervous about asking you to prom. Look, I that sounds I, about right. I have an OC character that I made or got made a few years ago that was a pangolin, like anthropomorph side, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I really liked it. That's awesome, dude, because like it's just such a underutilized, under like a underappreciated animal. I think so. And they're, you know, they're in danger and they're hunted and they need, they need to love, man, protect them. Protect oh, the yeah. boys. The second I got them, I made them canon in my setting nice. and in the country that is based off uh, Edo Japan. Yeah. Oh, that's it's very that's elemental cool. based. And so I immediately made a, just all from this book, a harvest paladin pangolin whose name was Garland. Nice. Ooh. That works very well. I love that. Yeah, there, there you go, Sam. There, there's the big boy. Hmm. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, no, Elion is such Look a good at the book. horns. It's so cool. Uh, it fi- it quote unquote fixes Ranger. Interesting. By making it a subclass of cleric and giving them Hunter's Mark as a feature. I see. I mean, everybody and their mother wants to fix the Ranger. Because it looks and sounds so cool, but it just mechanically doesn't work. It, it's weird because, like, uh, I love Rangers. Especially after getting like really deep into the Rangers Apprentice series, mm-hmm. that's how I feel when I got really into the uh, what are they called? What was that book series? Oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> well, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't yeah. that great. Hey, don't don't look <laughs> at me. I can't read. Series. I'm sorry. I listen to them on audiobook because I also can't read. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'll be the first to admit the it. Primal My first Hunter. D&D. My first D&D character, Elf Ranger. Nice. Oh, I'm not dude. afraid to be basic about it. But, uh, I mean, first Skyrim character yeah, was good. Uh, you know, it, it's a classic yeah. for a reason. Yeah. I mean, 
My biggest gripe with the Ranger, if you don't mind me getting a little bit PG-13. Oh, go for it. It's powered by racism. I mean, it is. Pick a type of person you don't like that you hurt that one more. Yep, yeah, that, that's true. And, and you know what? We're okay with that. Uh, <laughs> racism makes the world go round. It's okay. We need conflict in our games. Like, if it wasn't for racism, my brother wouldn't have had a complete freak, freak out about uh, these villagers not liking kobolds and threatened to genocide a whole town. I'm with him. I love kobolds, you love do, goblinoids. Love... <laughs> you can see my Discord profile picture is a bugbear. I, I I saw that. It's, it looks really cool, like an artificer bugbear. Craftsman. <laughs> Speaking of racism... <laughs> That's a segue, and I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a pretty good segue into our first bit of news. Oh, yes. Uh, if the news is racism, old news. <laughs> well, sh- old news, shit, I'm sorry. News. <laughs> the Planet of the Apes. Well, yeah, it is racist. <laughs> All right. Okay. Literally. <laughs> yeah, it's the hu- anti-human race. Yeah. Oh, all right. Now I get what you're saying. Wow, I'm yeah, slow. Yeah, Official big Planet big. of the Apes RPG is announced. <laughs> or or, you, or you talk about one of the other ones. You No, know that one, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm more scared what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so h- how would you guys like to play in the post-apocalyptic world of Planet of the Apes a- a- as an ape? I think that sounds really fun. It's kind of the same idea as what you're talking about as like an improvised fighter, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of these apes are pretty fucking smart. Have you seen Planet of the Apes? They got like scientists. Yeah, I mean, of course, the, the scientists in the first movie were like, holy shit, flying technology works. And literally this uh, astronaut just folds a paper airplane and throws it. <laughs> They're like, that's not possible. I mean, you know, they're figuring it out. <laughs> you know, it takes time for monkeys to get to aeronautics. Exactly. Ape together strong. Ape together strong. Ape together strong. Uh, I mean, will I be crucified if I say I'm not huge on Planet of the Apes? Yeah, I'm not huge on it. It's cool. Like, you know, I think it's neat. I just, I think I've seen like a couple of the new movies and like uh, the first of the old movies and like really nothing else. Yeah. It's, with with every movie series, I feel like they drag it on too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I always assumed the popularity was out there because it's like it, it's the it's the monkey version of Star Wars or like uh, the the monkey version of Lord of the Rings. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there, mm-hmm. there's a there's like a little section uh, of of, the, of a fan base for all that stuff. It's kind of like how like a uh, Harry Potter is like Star Wars for women. I mean, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. (laughs) (laughs) Like, just, dude, guys like Star Wars and, like, women love Harry Potter. That is true. I used to like Harry Potter until I became aware, socially, well, one, socially conscious, and two, just aware of how much you have to just accept. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, are these just wizards. At no point do they have basic elemental magic. No magic missile. None of it. Yeah. Nope. Like no I, summoning. I can't like Harry Potter because like everyone praises J.K. Rowling for her world building, but that world building has a whole lot of fucking holes. <laughs> yeah, my guy, you just had England in the forties. Why? Why have wizards still riding with feathers? I'm just waiting for an American exchange student to show up to Hogwarts with a gun. And then they're just like, yo, (laughs) what the fuck is this? Well, you see, in each revolver chamber, I have an infinite capacity of uh, these uh, certain kind of rounds of uh, bullets that have enchantments on them. So while I'm waving Mm. my my wand around one hand, I got my six shooter on the other. The (laughs) bullet Block the parry this, you filthy casual. Voldemort doesn't stand a chance. I love because they say so they have American Wizarding School. It exists. Yeah, and I love the idea of because no one at, at Hogwarts can lift, so the American Exchange students the physically strongest. Just buff as shit. <laughs> no one works out over there because their sport involves sitting and leaning. 
<laughs> We're gonna piss off the Harry Potter community. I'm okay with that. I'm also okay yeah, with that. Honestly, it's over. So. Let it die. <laughs> I don't know. Like I have the, a Death Eater's wand in my closet, and I'm okay with it dying. <laughs> uh, dude, people got so worked up with Harry Potter stuff over the past year. Like, uh, when Hogwarts Legacy anymore? came out, oh like God. I'm just like, hey, cool. Uh, a game, this is what I wanted in a Harry Potter game. I want to be able to people run around more. So about that for a whole, like, two weeks. What's there to be mad about? Shit. Like, uh, I, exactly. Uh, yeah, like, people were just, they... What gets me is like whenever something comes out, people get on their high horse and then they don't shut the fuck up for mm. weeks on end. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, I'm just trying to live my life like, and shut up. Well, people like my producer it. loved that game. I'm like, okay, that he can do that. That's cool. Moving on. Yeah, it's like who really cared, bro? Yeah. My first question is, can I bully people in that game? Can I be a school bully? <laughs> and, and the answer to that question is no, and that is wrong as far that's as the game. worst part of it yeah like what what you mean i can't be a slytherin and that and bully people what the fuck i want to be a hufflepuff who bullies people yeah Give me no one ever suspects the Hyrule hufflepuffles style, uh fucking like, hogwarts game sure i want you know if i were to play a game like that i would want it to be more focused on like the magical piece and the creatures oh my it. god that that's like that's where I, my my yeah, interest same. lies in that world. Like, because like you had the Fantastic yeah. Beast movies, and mm. okay, the first one was all about magical animals. That's awesome. The next yes. two are about Dumbledore's boyfriend. Yeah, like I literally don't give a shit about Dumbledore. Yeah, it's just like no, I I really I want to see about cool his creatures. Story, you know what I mean? Like, don't I, get I me. Mean, I love Dumbledore being a gay man, but like I, I just okay. Why is his boyfriend Hitler? Yeah, I mean, like, we all make some bad choices when we're young, you know. We all make uh, mistakes in the heat of passion, Jimbo. But, you know, <laughs> like... Uh, what the, Hitler can't be one of them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know what? Maybe we're thinking about things all wrong. Think about how much you could have changed history if, like, everyone talks about wanting to go back in time and kill Hitler. But has anyone ever thought laid? about... Yeah, what if you just got in, went back in time and fucked Hitler? Like, think you could change history entirely. Look, man, all Hitler needed was some pussy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all Hitler needed was to not get kicked out of school. Yeah, you know, like, uh, w what if you just convinced him that you know anime and manga was the way of the future? Fuck what Disney, if, and then you just bring Hitler to Japan. You know, like you take your what if, issue. What if Hitler just went else. back in time and found some bitches? Okay, yeah. <laughs> like for all we know, he already has. <laughs> you just like ditched him in a brothel one night with a. <laughs> you a saved sack of gold their... coins. <laughs> I mean, you'd still have the problem of the German economy being like, you know, really, really bad. So, oh, yeah. So like th there's a power <laughs> vacuum there. But, you know, it wouldn't be Hitler. It'd just be uh, s some other guy. How do we end up talking about Hitler on this podcast? I don't, Can uh, we talk about Hitler on this podcast? Uh, I don't know. We, we, I mean, his <laughs> birthday was less, was more than a week ago. Oh, hey, that, that's good enough for me. But you know what? Was Back to nerd news. Guys, <laughs> yeah. guys, listen up. Uh, Critical Role has done something unthinkable because, like, From nobody asked. And, and they made a whiskey. Is hmm. it good? What, Does what it taste it? like Sam Regal? I certainly hope so. That's a good question. <laughs> Does it taste like Laura Bailey? Oh, you know what? You know, <laughs> She's a married woman. I don't I'm sorry, fucking uh, care. Uh, Ash Ashley Johnson. That's <laughs> All of that was kosher. Let's go, oh, dude. <laughs> Travis. I'm sorry, Travis. We're just jealous. <laughs> you know, Critical Role has no business like uh, hoarding all these beautiful women for themselves or beautiful men. Oh, oh I say, or beautiful men. Uh, Matt Mercer is gorgeous. They're all yeah, you know, that's not bullshit. fair. <laughs> They're voice <laughs> actors. You don't have to see their face or their act. Yeah, they don't have Why to be are they beautiful. <laughs> I have such bias because Liam is my favorite Naruto character, and I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, no. <laughs> uh, you and know, we, we had a Naruto the... character on the show uh, a while back. We did. Yeah, uh -huh. it's just, uh, yeah, the, the uh, 
uh, Orion mm-hmm. Akaba from Critical Role. He played like one oh. one of the obscure Huga, Huga characters. <laughs> I'm not saying that's my favorite character because like I didn't remember the name when he mentioned it. I had to look it up. Me or Blurry. Let me try to remember all most of their names because I might. Yeah, it, it was like one of those <laughs> uh, like uh, side Hugas <laughs> that no one cared about. Oh, uh, yeah. Was it Kuro Hayashi Hiyashi Mukaiko Hinata, which is why it's one person's name, uh, but he was only half breed. Ah, yes, the half breed I, I I I like the novels. Okay, so uh, according yeah, to this, the, the, uh, <laughs> so base bourbon notes of baked apple, brown spice, and shortbread it's, cookie. And okay, I do whiskey. love like Jack Daniel's whiskey, so maybe. I I don't know, like a. Uh, Baked apple, brown spice, and shortbread with a that does sound good. I I mean, Sand I'm sober, so I might get it for my producer. Oh, this is a pretty good name. Yeah. I, Sand kegs high. Dude, a hint of smoke. critical role is like teaming up stuff. with fine familiar spirits to launch Sand oh, kegs that's high. An awesome a limited brand. edition on. super premium whiskey based on the fiery beverage from Critical Role's first campaign. The whiskey is created by Fine Familiar Spirits, co-founded by actor Matthew Lillard. Oh, let's go! Shaggy's in on it? All right, I gotta buy this whiskey. Uh, yeah, that, Wait, this is Critical Role terrific. Shaggy whiskey? They got the damn Shaggy whiskey, bro. Let's it's go. really buried the like, lead on that one, you know what I mean? Like Zoinks. Oh my god. Like Zoinks, yeah. Scoop! Yeah, we got whiskey! We got whiskey! Oh, there's even like a video on YouTube. Yeah, uh, Sankex High, the premier spirits collaboration. It's such a weird thing. Out of all the things to make as a D and D brand. See, look, ten seconds in, they knew the crossover event. You didn't know you needed. <laughs> there's a whole lot of those out there, and I'm just waiting. I mean, right? Just look at me in studio here. The crossover events that you didn't want. We, what, we plank? got plank. Yeah, plank. I still like to think Plank was sentient and Johnny was on to something. <laughs> I think Johnny just says kids from. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you, th- th- this guy, he knows how to party and like uh, he, he shows up in places around my house uh, with, without explanation. He's, he's boarded up all the time. I mean, is it, but is it not like a lot more fun if Plank is an eldritch entity? I hope so. <laughs> Dude, Plank is my patron. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a great old one right there. <laughs> the great oak stuff. one. <laughs> yes, exactly, the great oak the one. Great oak. Oak. <laughs> I love. You it. get to become Captain Melonhead. <laughs> that, that's great. That's just great. Okay. So where? Well, hold on, wait, real quick before we move off from this. Where can we get this whiskey? Do you know? Uh, I. I don't. I, I'd assume that we'd have to like uh, click on a bunch of links. <laughs> you can get it over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over there. Uh, you know, the Critical Role probably has a thing for it on their website. Because I don't imagine would... you can like buy it online, right? Like, yeah, you know, that... <laughs> I would hope you, you'd have to. They don't. They can't make money otherwise. I mean, they gotta have them in some stores, right? Well, like I doubt they're gonna contribute to the heat death of retail. <laughs> they might. Hold on, I'm looking it up. Well, while you look that up, in other news, because it's been a, a crazy time, Roll20 is coming to Discord as an activity. About damn time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I have my reaction to it. Yeah, imagine being this late to the party. Oh, okay, I did find it. it. It's a shame that I don't use... Uh, that we don't really use uh, Roll20 anymore because, like, yeah. it's just a shit show as far as a platform goes. But, like, it's not bad. And it's very I entry like level it. for uh, people getting into mm-hmm. D&D. I mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. That's how I play all Real my quick, D&D. for anyone who may be interested, I did find it. It says, uh, St. Eggs Hide was sold direct to consumer only through the Quest End website, questendwhiskey.com. Huh. And on the exclusive site for sankeggshide.com, the sale will run for three weeks only. You know, it's kind of funny that Roll20 for so long was just like, hey, we have our own integrated voice thing that you guys can use. And then collectively, everybody who plays on Roll20 is just like, we're just going to use Discord. Yeah, Yeah. no, 
I'm a big <laughs> Roll20 supporter, but I will admit, no, that sucked ass. No. Yeah, like, everybody I know that's ever used Roll20, they're like, mm, it has built-in stuff, but we're just going to use Discord instead. <laughs> it's just, it's such a slap in the face to Roll20, and really now that they've embraced it, it's like, you know, good on you guys. They're like, please, use our stuff. Is it worse that they've said they're not going to sunset that feature? You know what? Leave it there for the people that don't use Discord. All five of them. <laughs> All five. <laughs> yeah. No, that that sounds about right. And you know, I've had it launches this week. Use Discord. Yeah, launches this week. Yeah, the beta yeah. testing launch week uh, on April thirtieth. What do you know? That's in a couple days. Yeah, two of them. Oh. Uh, all two of them. Oh, Forty-eight hours. <laughs> Yeah, so if y'all are interested in that and you want to, you know, streamline your process, that could be the way to go. Nice. It certainly consolidates things by putting it all in one place. Definitely. And maybe it'll fix the mobile version of Roll20. May you know what? It on. might. Or maybe they ah. could just abandon the mobile version in favor they of the Discord should. activity. Yep. Because back when the mobile version came out, if I tried to use it, it cleared all of the uh, actions off my character sheet. Dude, no. I had this weird issue with Roll20 where it split my account into two separate accounts, even though the account used the same password and uh, email. Weird. It made no sense. So I'd have access to some of my stuff on one side and access on another side, and it was purely dependent on... To to uh, what browser I was using to log in. Hmm. Hmm. It was the weirdest thing. Your face on Discord looks like you're like a Japanese movie. What, what is that supposed to mean? It doesn't Nani? doesn't Am match I not your, dumb? your words. Yeah, you don't, you don't look like you're dumb. Well, someone's oh. got to get me some subtitles then. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, oh. sub better than dub anyway. As, as what people say. I can't necessarily agree. You know, it, First, it really um, depends. The oh, I think the Overlord dub is fantastic. I get that. It depends. Man, he's got such a smooth voice, and he reads the audiobooks. Ooh, he does? That's awesome. Yeah, Chris Guerrero is the one reading the audiobooks. Fuck yeah. Other news, there's still a Minecraft movie happening. <laughs> that is a thing. Starring Jack Black. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Jack Black. Out of everything. all the sentences, that's sure one of them. Jack Black is really moving into the whole voice acting thing. But yeah, I think the physical acting for him is probably just getting harder. Uh, you know, like is you it... have to run around and do all these uh, outward motions. Whereas it's like... Uh, if you're just doing voice acting, you're just in a studio. And it's really yeah, not that like, big a deal. Like Nacho Libre and School of Rock, those are those were he was a very physical character in those. He's a very physical character in every movie he does. So it's just like agree. you know, like maybe his knees are getting a little bad, and it's just like he can't be doing power slides in every goddamn movie. So true. He can't be randomly singing the good. When will that happen to the rock? Nah, the rock's too juiced up. Oh my god. My man needs to give it a break. <laughs> if he was a better actor, I'd say keep going, but Dwayne Johnson just isn't. Did you see that there, uh, I don't know if it was AI or fake, but uh, there's a God of War poster with him being in The Rock. Oh god, that's worse. And I, um, Jason Momoa's right there. Uh, yeah. I'm so tired of Dwayne. I'm sorry. <laughs> Plays the same person in every movie. Yeah. Uh, is he one of those well actors known. where. His contract says he can't lose a fight. Pretty much. Uh, because there are actors where that is in their contract. Mm -hmm. That is dumb. Like, what, do you one not know how Jason to lose? Statham. One of them is Jason Statham. He, he doesn't want to look bad. <laughs> That's like... It's why, like, it, it's... Ridiculous. Yeah, it's Jason yeah, Statham, like, The Rock, and Vin Diesel. I feel like The Rock has to have, like, a whole hero complex. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... He's why they're making live-action Moana. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. 
when he ironically does not have the body type for his own character. Yeah, he doesn't that have is... Down syndrome. I mean, I'm more <laughs> meant that he's he's cut muscle and not big boy like Maui. Yeah, he's not bulky like. Oh Maui. yeah, but like a part of what like made Maui was a, an endearing character is it's just like a he had just kind of these uh, these Down syndrome these kind of like. You know, he was a hero of the, the, like, he had these Down Syndrome features and whatnot, and whatnot. Like what? Like Explain. what? Do you, want, do you want to put the shovel down? Yeah, yeah, I mean. No, no, like, being... I, no, like, I had, <laughs> I had this explained to me by, like, uh, some mental health professionals, and because they, like, did a whole, like, breakdown of it. It was like. Does Maui have Down Syndrome, the di- the lively? <laughs> I oh, guess so. Like, Snap Pat's <laughs> coming back? Uh, you know what? That that would be interesting. But it's just like a, he has physical characteristics of it. Moist critical be like, ooh. And then it's just like a, he, in his uh, backstory, they're like, oh, they, they threw him away because like uh, he looked different. Look, I mean, yeah. Mm. It, it's it's weird, but like, you know, get your representation where you can, right? <laughs> Look, if people love anything, it's being represented. Dude, the best representation I got as a diabetic is Scott Malkinson. Who the fuck uh, is that? I was Scott Malkinson. <laughs> I got diabetes. See? And, and that, that, that's South all Park. we get. Oh, I got that. Yeah. I mean, new autistic representation in the anime world happened. Excuse I mean, me? you guys already uh, had Rock Lee. What more do you need? <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, Lyos from, Del- Lyos from Delicious and Dungeon. You know what? Yes, oh, I, that... I pointed that well, out to my wife yesterday. And I'm just like, dude, that that is fantastic autistic representation there. Because yeah, no, it's Lyos done right and it's not perfect. shoved in your throat. Same with Senshi. I haven't watched it yet. So I don't know about yeah, Senshi. Yeah, I think he's just like. A very earnest dwarf. Maybe I'll watch it with my girlfriend. Too. Um, the best way I can describe it is it's a cozy cooking show till it's not. Pretty much, it's mm. a cozy show till it's about autism, and then it's like, oh, plot. Yeah, but uh, how do they Lyos know what that is? A hundred percent autistic, and it's just like I'm there for it. You're telling me the D and D world has doctors that can detect autism. Well, last episode, one of his fr- quote unquote friends is like all fed up with his behavior, and he just says how am i supposed to know that if you never once told me and it's just like dude that a hundred percent relatable everyone's like yeah shiro's kind of a dick here let him cook let him cook but it's just like one of those things where like shiro has clearly never been exposed to that so it's just like Mm -hmm. okay on one hand Lyos, uh, lios can't read a room and on the other hand uh Homeboy is just like not used to dealing with people that, with autism. So it's like, yeah, you know what? It, well, I get it. it. You know, yeah. And Lyos has a special interest where if you let him talk about it, he does not stop. Yeah. And honestly, I that's one of the things mm-hmm. I love about dealing with uh, having a, an autistic player at a table or an autistic DM. Like, dude, nine times out of 10, if you have a good autistic DM, uh, like a, m- one of my first DMs that I ever had was autistic. And like he, I swear to this day, like he is the best DM I have ever played with because like he'll run everything in his head and he's just got that focus and it's just amazing. Uh, I, I reiterate that I, that I prep eight hours a week. And I'm prepared <laughs> I think, for every I think event we all probably. have a little bit of autism. You know? I, I wish I, I could and, get I get a little bit more of that. You know, just to, a little bit more. Could, yeah, double well, dip a little bit. I mean, I got I got diagnosed with it in eighth grade. Fuck yeah, that's I, a superpower, dude. Yeah, that's why yeah, I say I have a superpower. But they, well, you have my player cat. Her son is very autistic, and it's definitely not a superpower for him. Mm-hmm. So I have started to classify it. And I say I have spreadsheet autism. Yeah, I can see that. Spread. You know what? That's a very good way of putting it. Hmm? It's just. Shout out oh. to any listeners out there who may be, you know, on the spectrum or, you know. Yeah. And if you love hanging out in Google. We do not Docs, hate to offend or do not intend to offend. So I speak this. I speak as someone with autism. Uh, yeah. It's a good experience for me, but it's not a good experience for everybody. Yeah. Like. You know, that's really, you could say that about anything, really. 
No, definitely. Mm. It's all well, about not, perception, I feel like. Yeah. Well, not being hit by a car, that's bad for everybody. Eh, sometimes. Yeah, my know. brother got over it. Depends if the owner of the car has a lot of money. Character development. <laughs> well, for my brother, it, it, the character development took a long time, but you know, he, he, now he's a responsible adult with an apartment and he, he's got a job and he pays taxes. See, he should be thanking that guy. That Yo, that guy. last bit's the problem, though. Ah, yeah. Well, I've made a point not to tell him where the taxes go. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> or else I fear he might stop immediately. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. Dude, if you told everybody exactly where their taxes are going, they'd stop immediately. Everyone should just stop immediately. Honestly. What are they going to do? I mean... That it just really reminds me of that one time in a class when the professor said, "Okay, you're gonna install this monitoring software when you're taking a test." Whole class said no. What did the professor do? Moved on. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I, I like that. Like I remember, like a, we have the power. Yeah, you know that, you're that's not the, failing a whole class without getting fired. Yeah, honestly, it's like what you're gonna do? You can't, you can't stomp all of us. Mm-hmm. All right, Sam, what do you got for the monster this week before we uh, go uh, far too far off into <laughs> they can't stop us all? <laughs> oh, they man. can't. I mean, speaking of, you know, many boys who are powerful together, why not talk about many dragons, right? So I've, I've talked about, you know, the different species of dragons. We talked about, you know, none of the big ones yet. Mm-hmm. None of the chromatics or the metallics or anything like that. But I've been oh. dancing around the, you know, the skirts. Oh. And going back into the, you know, the EO Draco Orientalis stuff, talking about Oriental dragons here. Oh, we got the, the long, long slithery boys. Yeah, long slithery boys. Some of them are fat and chunky. <laughs> you know, some of them have legs. Some of them are weird. How yeah. many of them grant wishes if I gather seven things? Yeah, exactly. Wait, but, what you got to do is you have so to get their these... balls. And then you have <laughs> you extort them for a wish so that they can have their balls back. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> the glass shatter moment. What have they done with my bottle of summer? <laughs> my testicle summer. Give me back my balls. So they were the dragons in the lands of the character. Um, so looking at my notes here, let's get it going. My players are in an interesting spot with dragons right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I want to run what are called magical contracts. Essentially, uh, under penalty of it, it's self-enforced. Should you break it, all magic is cut off from you and all parties <laughs> involved that broke it. They can't antagonize dragons in any way. Nice. They, mm. Anytime they run into one, they have to try to talk it out first. That's pretty cool. I like that. I'm getting into the descriptions here. We got lung dragons are based upon oriental, Chinese, and Japanese dragons, as opposed to the western-based true dragons. However, they are still true dragons. And they also appear in corresponding themes, settings such as Karatur or Rokugan. Rokugan, I think is how you say it. Lung dragons are spirits that embody and empower aspects of nature rather than being normal physical creatures. Most lung dragons don't have breath weapons, but possess instead a wide variety of spell-like abilities. So you can definitely say they're a lot more magical than mm. the traditional dragons. Mm. So all lung dragons begin their lives as a yi lung, or yu lung. This juvenile stage of their life lasted 25 years, after which they would transform into a different variety of lung dragon. Most lung dragons could survive from consuming minerals alone, although some varieties did enjoy the taste of meat on occasion. So getting into all of their transforming into different stages, there were eight known species of lung dragon. So you had the yu lung, the carp dragon. They were the larval stage for the rest of the lung dragons. And I'll kind of give you a small little description here. The smallest of the lung dragons, the yu lung only grew up to about 35 feet, 10 meters in length. Their body and tail were similar in appearance to those of a giant carp. They had blue-gray scales with colored markings, and their eyes were yellow and looked like a cat's eye. Their All two right. arms were gripped with sharp <clears throat> claws and a long beard that flowed from beneath their snout. 
So, you know, big scaled fish with a beard and two arms. <laughs> <laughs> that's a One Piece character. That it sounds very Lovecraftian. That's just Kaido. Kind of. And getting into the next one here, we have the Chiang Lung, the river dragon. Chiang Lungs were physically distinguished by their enormous size, up to 158 feet, 48 meters in length. Their scales were various shades of green or blue with a yellow underside. They had long white horns that grew from their heads, and adults had multicolored beards. As they were polymorphs, they were frequently seen in human form only. So they were more of the, which you, which you'd expect from Oriental Dragon, the long body, you know. Mm. Yeah, we talked about that earlier because, like, they kind of do that like little wavy movement, which yeah. I, I like to think that they're just kind of like ride in the weave. Yeah, yeah, like riding the air or something like that. Ride the weave. I, I would imagine a lot of them probably fly via like some form of like telekinesis or like magical manipulation or something well, like that. Yeah, I mean, if it goes off act like the traditional Japanese lore of a dragon, they're walking on clouds. Yeah. So next up, we get into the earth dragons, the Li Young, Li Lung. Li Lungs were per physically distinguished by their normal size, up to 120 feet, 30 meters in length. Unlike most dragons, they lacked scales and instead were covered in a coarse black fur, the texture of metal wire. Only hatlings had scales, usually light green in color. As they grew older, the scales shed and replaced with fur. Usually by the time a Li Lung was a juvenile, the scales were completely gone. A Li Lung had an unusual appearance. Its body and tail resembled that of a lion, yet it had the face similar to a humanoid. Its tail was adorned with colorful feathers similar to a peacock, and the Li Lung was the only lung dragon with wings. And this looked a lot more like a sphinx, for example, or like oh, huh. a griffin with human face. That's interesting. Yeah, very strange. So next we have the Lung Wang, the sea dragon. Lung Wangs are physically distinguished by enormous size, so 135 feet, 41 meters in diameter. Lung Wangs were a distant relative of dragon turtles. They had a large shell covered in thick green scales spotted with silver scales. Covering its neck and head were smaller, lighter green scales spotted with golden scales. Its front legs were large flippers, usually 80% of the length of its shell. Each had two extremely sharp talons at the end. A Lung Wang's head resembled that of a Shen Lung with long flowing green, or sorry, golden whiskers. Hmm. So, yeah, think like a dragon turtle, but they have whiskers. and I, I do like the whole whisker bit, thing, you know, because like, it's just yeah. interesting. Yeah, I think it's They're very a little bit more distinguished. Yeah, yeah. yeah like... So next up we have the Pan Lung, the coiled dragon. They were up to 151 feet, 46 meters in length. They resembled pan lung in appearance, but were shorter and thicker. As hatchlings, they had dull scales that were either blue, green, orange, or red, sometimes polychromatic. As they aged, a shen lung scales brightened. A shen lung had ridges along its back, a spiked tail, and two horns atop its head. The gold-colored whiskers feature predominantly on their snout. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I got three more here. Oh, damn. Next there's so have... many of them. Yeah, oh, more. yeah. It's a diverse cast when you go to uh, Oriental Dragons. I guess so. We have the Shen Lung, the Spirit Dragon. Now, this one is probably more reminiscent of what you would expect from yeah. uh, like the uh, what, Dragon Ball. Yeah, it, yeah. Shen Long is his name. Yeah. Yeah, and he's what? a spirit dragon, Mom, right? What they do? were also in there, to 151 feet or 40 meters. They resemble the pan lung in appearance. Where are where is she? They're shorter Outside. and thicker. I had things that had dull scales uh, that were either blue. Stuck in the podcast, Kirsty. Oh, oh no, I did. You need to go oh, okay, take care these of that. look very similar, yeah. except that they were thicker and shorter. No. Uh oh. I mean, yeah, kind of. We have like 30 minutes left. All right. Well, you can continue with that for a moment. I'll be right back. No problem, no problem. So, second before last, we have the Tian Lung, the Celestial Dragon. 
So they were distinguished by their enormous serpentine body, up to 155 feet, 47 meters in length. They were born with dull gold scales, but as they grew older, the scales changed to a bright radiant yellow. The scales gave off a sweet aroma similar to cherry blossoms. Some Tian lungs had light green or orange scales, and they had polychromatic beards, manes, and whiskers. The whiskers were long and rose over their heads like horns. I feel like we're getting more and more into the uh, traditional... Yeah, it's going right to what you think of with the long dragons. Yeah, they're kind of uh, transmorphing into this, like... Mm. (laughs) Well, because it's really neat, like, whereas Europeans viewed dragons as a hazard, Mm. uh, they were revered in Japan. Oh, absolutely. And then we have the last one, the largest, the Tung Ming Lung, uh, the Typhoon Dragon. The largest of the lung dragons... They were 167 feet, 50.9 meters in length. They had thick scales in various colors. Blue, green, dark red, and violet were the most common. They had small dark eyes and a wispy beard under their massive jaws, which were lined with razor-sharp teeth. And they, you know, basically the... You know, what you would think of when you think of Oriental dragons. Yeah. The big balls. The oldest, the biggest the strongest, stuff like that. So, like I said before, unlike most other dragons, they did not have a breath weapon. Instead, they had other powerful magical abilities, which varied among their kind. All lung dragons could detect the thoughts of other creatures. They could turn invisible at will and polymorph into the shape of just about any animal or large creature that they wanted. Lung dragons could also shift to other planes of existence. So they had, like, a natural plane shift. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to go too deep into all of them to kind of leave it open for maybe future talk about. But yeah, I think they are cool and they need to be in more settings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but if I expound on the no, lore. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so essentially in my setting, five countries all based on ancient civilizations, Edo, Japan, ancient Rome, medieval France, because that's where, where knights came in. Right. Uh, Love that. Arabia and Vikings. And the one on Japan is highly tied into the elemental planes mm-hmm. where uh, magic happened, someone tried to summon them, and there were four beasts of each element. Mm-hmm. Ryu for the wind, a phoenix, a behemoth for the earth, and leviathan for the water. And that's how Janasi happened. It was a common ancestor that was exposed to the elemental energy. Yeah, yeah like it's an evolution thing. Sounds really cool. <sighs> Uh, sorry about that. I'm back. No problem, no problem. We'll Things happen. Okay. Uh, what I miss? I was just expounding on some lore. Yeah. We get to the final stage of the, uh, you know, the lung dragon with the tongue, me lung, the typhoon being the biggest and the strongest, and kind of their final stage. You know. All right. But yeah, that's about all I have for for them today. I think I could take probably the tarp dragon, the smallest. <laughs> yeah. They're still huge. Uh, <laughs> they, it's like you know, dealing with a gator. Just, I talked about their abilities a little bit. Um, all the lung dragons could detect the thoughts of other creatures. They could turn invisible. They could polymorph into pretty much whatever they want. And lung dragons had the ability to basically plane shift on command. So. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they can polymorph, then you know what? Maybe there is. If you can, like, uh, kind of reason with one of them, but they're like kind of like oh, absolutely. Mind- oh, they're, they're yeah, very reasonable. Their alignments all kind of range around the neutral goods, yeah. you know. So maybe if you could get one, like, in kind of a contest, like, uh, convince them to play a game with you. you. Got a wise Japanese man shows up in town one day. <laughs> yeah, literally, Uncle Iroh could have been a dragon. Uncle Iroh, yeah, he was. I mean, he was the dragon of the one. I, 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 I challenge you to pie one. show, you know. <laughs> Someone's actually working on the rules for that. If you beat me, I give you a draconic blessing. You know what? Uh, yeah. Draconic boons are already a thing, so that's that's yeah. good. And yeah. yet, dragon warlock, not a thing. What? It does hmm. kind of. I kind of had a. I had a dragonborn warlock that was had Tiamat as its patron. Well, yeah, but that, well, yeah, that was, works uh, for fiend. But like, 
Yeah. Uh, we did something that was straight up that, but it was a homebrew without being fiend. And yeah. I, I've, I've always endorsed it because like, it's just so cool. Yeah, it should definitely be a normal thing. Yeah, yeah. I think they're a natural source of magic in the world, and they're usually the largest. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't be the strangest warlock I've ever found? Absolutely not. I got yeah. uh, I got your future self warlock and the GM warlock. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did mention that. Yeah. Yeah, but I think if uh, we don't have anything else, we can move into our homebrew features. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think I figured out what's uh, going on with our, our stingers here. Like, you guys aren't hearing them, but I think they are being properly recorded. Ah. That's good. All right. You want to go ahead and start us off with your homebrew? Well, you know, it, it's always fun in the generic realms when we have good items. Realms, generic realms. <laughs> I'm going to have to look into why it's not doing the thing. Like maybe, figure it out. I, you know, I bet if I restart everything, it would just do things right. But like, I ain't doing that now. Fuck that shit. It's going to be before I record it. <laughs> so I bring to you guys the origami familiar, which nice. And uh, let me just pull up the art for this right here. Cause I think it looks really cool. Pull that up on God. I hope I can fold it into a tiger. I know, right? Yeah, and let me well, maybe because I, I love the allegory of the paper tiger in front of a storm. Mm. Yeah, like it can be whatever you want it to be, I suppose. Like uh, the initial art is a paper owl, which is really oh, that got elaborate. Oh, yeah. Um, the person used a little bit of AI for it, but you know, mm. I, I think it looks cool. Oh, wow. That is not what I was expecting. That looks awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. I was expecting like a little paper crane. <laughs> nah, nah. Like, it just looks really cool. Damn. It's nice. very, very You elaborate. know what this gives me the vibe of? Like, um, what was her name from Naruto with the paper? Oh, Conan. Conan. Yeah. Conan, yeah. Yep, her. Yeah, because she had that yeah, paper. Like a paper that. mage would be really cool. That would yeah. be interesting. So with the with this uh, wondrous rare item, a sheaf of papers in a variety of colors and textures, each with a fate uh, opalescent uh, opalescence to them. Without knowledge of what these papers are, they are mere, they merely seem to be remarkably durable and uh, obvi obviously magical. Once one knows uh, the their use as a magical uh, materials to craft origami creatures. The holder can feel the, let's see, the holder can feel the way the paper guides the holder in order to properly use it. Okay, so even if you're not good at origami, it help it guides you. Oh, so my familiar will not just be a sheet of paper. <laughs> I mean, it could. <laughs> I did my best. It's just unfolded. Guys, my, my familiar is a paper airplane. Near, oh, it, it falls two feet. It's oh. a fighter jet, <laughs> paper fighter jet. Familiar? No, that's a that's a stand. Th that that's legit. I love it. Now, this item is often found in sheaves of one d four plus two large, thin, colorful pieces of paper. Okay. So construction paper, <laughs> nice. or or maybe not. However, you want it to be. Over the course of half an hour, the holder can. Use a sheet to create an intricately folded paper replica of a creature that can be summoned by the Find Familiar spell. Okay, nice. When complete, the paper creature animates, becoming a familiar as though it was created by the spell, and follows all the rules of that spell. When you dismiss a familiar created this way, the paper unfolds and returns to its flat state, bearing no marks or indication of previous folds. The paper can be used again. Whenever the familiar uh, created with the paper dies, the paper is ruined and becomes unusable. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see this item having, like, you know, obvious superior weakness to fire. But, you know, for all purposes, being a familiar is good. Yeah. I, I like it. Up. Yeah, maybe if it gets hit by, like, a fire spell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would say that if I was DMing, that'd be the major weakness. 
Yeah, you roll like a D four on like a even number gets destroyed. Like maybe it auto fails checks against gust of wind. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Like, so it'd be like kind of less than your normal familiar but like it's still yeah. good and in this sense it's an item that could be used by your non cast yeah. giving, giving familiars to essentially any player is always like a good thing i think yeah like have yeah. you'd have a few sheets of it so it's just like your whole party could have a origami familiar yeah exactly right and like you were saying earlier a little paper tiger yeah, like that's why in like our One Piece campaign, I opted to give Tonga the ability to create a familiar. Mm. I, I cannot wait till we start ours. Mm. One Piece campaigns are awesome. Hell yeah. I've been reading yeah, the like manga since 2018, so I am excited. I've been reading it since it showed up in Shonen Jump, and I'm just like, ah, so good. Ah, oh, it's, oh, it, One Piece is older than I am. <laughs> I remember back when it was just uh, this little four kids uh, uh, animation uh, alongside my typical Saturday morning cartoon lineup. And it's just like the the One Piece rap had no business being. Good. I love that song. It, it has no business being good. You know what I mean? No, it does not. But damn, does it hit. It, it shouldn't, but it does. <laughs> uh. I'm literally holding my Mara Mara Nomi in my hand that I keep it at all times. <laughs> it, my it, friend, fantastic. my friend went to Japan when he was getting his animation degree as a class trip. Oh, that's and awesome! And I have he got brought me an Ace figure, uh, Mara Mara Nomi, and a golden Ace and Sabo coins. Oh, that's so cool! Oddly enough, not my favorite character nor my favorite devil group. Well, you know how it goes, but. Well, I mean, it's impossible to pull off the Doflamingo sunglasses. Yeah. It's like... I want... It's a, it's really hard to be, like, that flamboyant and still pulling, like, that many bitches at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like... It's like, hmm, this Doflamingo guy, like, he he's just like... What are you? Here is my homebrew for tonight. Oh, that's rad. You can get a look at that. Ah, Mask of the Yokai. Yeah, I sent you the link already. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right here. All right, cool. So, I bring Mask of the Yokai, created by Rudox Tavern. Shout out to them. They have a Patreon. They're on socials, it looks like. All right. So, we have the rare, wondrous item, Mask, requires attunement. Gives you Shapeshifter's Blessing, three times per long rest. You can use your action to gain the effect of the Alter Self spell, no concentration required. You gain the ability of Oni's Malevolence, recharge five and six. When a creature comes within ten feet of you and starts its turn there, you can use your reaction to force them to make a DC 13 Wisdom saving throw, becoming frightened of you until the end of their next turn. Okay, I'm already oh. loving this because it's got major like uh, bleach uh, holification vibe. Yeah, that's so, a hollow mask right there. there. Yeah, it's just like okay, like maybe give it like a little disappear reappear uh, mechanic just for extra yeah, holification. Just move your hand down and yeah, just move the hand down and it comes over the face. Imagine the and then, flavor. Like, the the altar self is just like okay, boom, give yourself claws or something. Mm -hmm. Just you go and you go into your resurrection. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Next, we have the Will of Sukuno Gami. While attuned to the item, you can perform a special ritual to bond with a single non living object and infuse it with a beloved, benevolent spirit. You perform the ritual over the course of four hours, during which you have to fully focus on the ritual without interruption. Mm. The bonded item can be any piece of gear or weapon or item. Uh, the item gains the following benefits for as long as it is bonded to you. The bonded item becomes magical and cannot be destroyed by non-magical means. You can use your bonus action to summon the item to your hand or to don it on yourself. Once per short rest, you can cast a clairvoyant spell without requiring any components or spell slots using the bonded item as a target. You can stop being bonded to the item if you lose attunement to the mask. If you bond with a different item or if you spend more than 24 hours, 24 hours while being further than 10 miles away from your bonded item. Hmm. I like this. It kind of lends itself got, more to those bleak vibes. You could <laughs> you could don the sword immediately. Dude, mm. that was dope. 
Transform. Yes. You whip out the mask. Boom. It some you, bonus action. Summon the sword. Main action. Transform further with the alter self. I love it. It's great. So I don't know. I'm looking up clairvoyance because I don't know what it does in this con. Not a great spell. Yeah, like what you can create a s- invisible sensor within range in a location familiar to you. I never get far enough into D and D to actually use spells like the that. The sensor remains in place a for third the third level spell. Yeah, it's a third level. Oh, spell. is it? Yeah. Oh, I th- I thought it was a higher level because like I never see no. people oh, okay. use it. It oh, just it, it's just bad. Okay, when you cast a spell, you choose seeing, seeing or hearing. You can choose, or you can use the maybe chosen was... sense through the sensor as if you were in its space. Okay, maybe I'm as thinking of a different piece. spell. Oh, I understand. Mm-hmm. You could like be like, oh, I'm gonna bond to this coin, leave the coin somewhere, and use it to like spy on stuff. It does have to be worth a hundred gold at least. Yeah. Uh, it's a hundred I mean, gold no, coins. No <laughs> material. Yeah, no, it, 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 as long as something values that at a hundred gold, why not? Yeah, so. It could have yeah. sentimental value. There you go. Uh, creature that can see the sensor, such a creature benefiting from seeing visibility or true sight, sees a luminous, intangible orb. Interesting. Okay, okay. That does give some interesting options. Kind of, mm. kind of adds to the omnipresence of like the Oni spirit. Yeah, I like that. Shout out to Rudox Tavern. Yeah, I like this. It just it seems like it has a lot of flavor and is fun. Yeah, you mm-hmm. get the mask look like whatever you want. Oh, I like that. Mm. And I I just love masks personally. Like oh yeah, no our bard uh because that's my producer has a is big bleach fan and so mm. his character she has a mask that's just appeared. Yeah, I, I feel like that'd be a fun way of handling lots of transformations, like masks and stuff, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I found a sort... I think, a, I think it's a type of bard class that you would love, then. It's the masks bard. Ooh. Ooh. I think I saw that somewhere. <coughs> but uh, I can show off a class I've not talked about yeah, yet. Please, please that time. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just sending you the link to buy the whole book, but huh, shocker of all the Spire Secrets, my favorite book. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you like cantrips? Do you think higher level spells are just random bookkeeping? <laughs> do you just want to go pew pew? My fire explode, my little fire bolt explodes, and I have AC based on intelligence. Nice. The War Mage, ah. a class completely based on cantrips, unless you take the one subclass that kind of defeats the purpose. Fair enough. Uh, where you can either be bit baser, uh, club class on bishops, cards, which will require real playing cards, wow. dice, kings, knights, lancers, pawns, and rooks. They can fit any role from tank to assassin. Shit. And their gimmick is war mage tricks, which are kind of like invocations, but it's more, I'll just read what I'm looking at right now. Uh, cloak of feathers. Your AC is now 10 plus dex plus intelligence. Interesting. Oh, that's nice. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this, and this looks really fucking. Oh cool. yeah, the art's oh, fantastic. New classes, new races. Hundred. Oh my god! Did you ever want to play a necromancer, but actually do necromancy stuff? This yes. one. Hey. You, you actually get to just as a class feature summon undead. Nice. That's the necromancer. In this. War mage. Uh, oh, this looks great. It does have a rogue subclass that some people might find too strong. Uh. The Enforcer, Finesse is now no longer necessary. Ooh. Yeah, that's so kind of cool, sneak though. Attack... Yeah, oh yeah, but so yeah, you can now sneak attack with a greatsword, and it has the strongest wizard I've ever seen. Magic Missile Wizard. Do you like one spell and one spell only? Uh, at level two, it can no longer be blocked by shield or anything. You just get a free extra Magic Missile. And you can cast it once at its lowest level for free. Not once, sorry. You can cast it at its lowest level for free, equal to your intelligence mod. It is so busted, and I'm not going to pretend it's not, but one spell wizard is hilarious. Uh, it, it is awesome. Oh no, what happened here? She's dead, Jim. <laughs> ah, 
We got him back. Connected. Weird. What happened? Oh, did I disconnect? No, no, it wasn't you. I... Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, that Valdas is a book I got a while ago. Uh, maybe like in 20, I want to say 19. It has been my go-to for anything. I look at Valdas before I look at official material sometimes. I really like this. I would definitely play these classes. Oh boy, do I have a thing to send to you then? Please do. Yeah, it's a link to a Google Drive. Oh boy. Look, we yeah. have we have many Google Drives and Docs that have so many that, books. <laughs> that's mine. Uh, awesome. That's the homebrew I love to share is Valdas. Oh man, nice. We'll add that to our compendium. Oh yeah, definitely have fun with that. Um, always good to have resources for a campaign. Oh, absolutely. It's even got a spell that so far no one in my games have, has ever taken. Candy Blast. Candy Blast. <laughs> no one will take Candy Blast. I know a guy who would. I, two guys. Bludgeoning that would, damage. Can, bludgeoning damage cantrip. And by weapons. shooting. Oh, ancestral weapons. You're gonna love that one. Imagine customizable magic items. I like that. Ginny, and that grows with you. I love that. Yeah, Ginny D has a whole video on it that's essentially one long commercial. Yeah. <laughs> she's very shameless. Oh, I, I love it. <laughs> I respect the hell out of it. Hey, mm. I mean, I bought it, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You know, you got to give her credit. <laughs> yeah, that's what. No, I love it. Shame is pointless. Do whatever. Just do things. <laughs> as long as you have high production values. Hmm. Fair but enough. Right. Here, uh, yeah. so I was so just something I was expecting. So feel free to deny this. But did you have any questions about my game or anything specifically? How can we join it? <laughs> Dead ass. I Dead we ass. are gonna do a small special called Home Sweet Homebrew crossover. Where episode? the one rule is you have to play a class you a full class you've never played before. Ryan, you just connected from the lip sin. He's dead, Jim. Oh my god, he's dead. I guess you're in charge. All right, this is my show now. What's your first decree? <laughs> connected there. What the comes fuck? right back. <laughs> okay, what what did I miss? <laughs> my uh, my reign did not last long. Uh, we put him in charge, and I asked his first decree, and you came back immediately. <laughs> My first decree is Orion must come back. <laughs> Retro. Okay. But yeah. Uh, because I was I was saying that we are looking to fill a slot for a uh, three. It's just a three part special we're doing mm. called Home Sweet Homebrew. Damn. And the gimmick is uh, must be a class you've never played before. Okay. Ooh, I am mm -hmm. gung ho for something I like, like that. that. Yeah. And it will take place. I'm not running it, but it'll take place in mm. my own setting. Because right. when other people run games in my setting, that makes me just super happy. Right. Well, that sounds awesome. I would love to, to hear more about that. And I think that's probably a good time to close it on out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So where can people find you in all of the uh, stuff that you do? Uh, best place to find me is twitch.tv. Uh, choose underscore your underscore role, R-O-L-L. -L. Nice. Uh, you can just search "choose your role" all one word on YouTube and on Instagram. Mm -hmm. The Instagram is exclusively pictures of my puppies. Nice. <laughs> and we for. And we stream every Saturday at six thirty p.m. Eastern, and every other Monday at seven p.m. Eastern. Though last we had last time we had to stop because our uh, the DM's internet just killed itself. No, so it, do it does then. happen. I, I've yeah. had it happen to us a, a couple of times where it's just like, well, I guess, guess it's not working tonight. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's very fun. And um, you've actually had one of our players here as a guest, Casey. Ah, oh, um, yes. Yeah, they are the light side user to my dark side. Nice. Mm. Where I am. And, and it works out very well. <laughs> Yeah, it, I can it's a process there. Really? And uh, you can if you're interested in my ramblings, post the parade on Twitter where right. I've taken to just uh, throwing out random monsters I create. 
I'm just it. saying, hey, do whatever you yeah. want with them. Yeah, it, it's been great talking to you on Twitter and interacting with you. You've been a, a cool person, and I'm glad yeah, we could get you on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, now you have me on Discord if you ever want to talk Digimon, and if you ever want to have me on here again, I'd be more than happy to. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. We're all about ha- bringing back on the fan favorites. <laughs> If I get one fan good... mission accomplished. <laughs> I know, exactly being on a podcast was already a professional goal I wanted to meet. I know, right? It feels feels good. Mm. I still don't understand what we're doing that makes it so ma- Like, most of our listeners are from India. And I'm like, get, you know what? Uh, we have the voicemail now. One of y'all leave us a voice yes. message and let us know Love. what are we doing that's so appealing. <laughs> What are we doing right? What are we It'll doing be this. wrong? Yeah. Do you hate us? Do you love us? I don't know. Is there something special or specific you would want us to talk about? Now is the time. <laughs> now, yeah. now is the time because we do have the voicemail, which I, I'm excited because yeah. people can leave us hate mail. They can leave us compliments, you know, bolster our ego. That, that'll be cool. You know, don't yeah, spend actually, all those compliments in one place. And then, there, you know, ideas. That That's always cool. Yeah, I'll post it to our Twitter right now before we close out the show. Yeah, definitely. Hit us with that I, number one more time, all right? All right. 513-570-4443. So, hit it up. 553-570-4443. Uh, it's four 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 three. Oh, yeah. See, that's four. mnemonic. You got three of fours. Get us up on our new voicemail. Let us know and you know what? Words. Well, if we like it, if we like it, if we don't like it, might just play it on the show. We might absolutely. Maybe if there's no music or all the all the in the background. You, know? you make it sound like that's a major problem. <laughs> People do that, man. Be. <laughs> we don't want it to be. That's the He's point. <laughs> like it before it happens. Yeah, better better be uppity about it now and just promise it we will make fun of you. <laughs> yeah, Sam is very proactive. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> count this as a voicemail. Talk about Warhammer. People are going to call now. You know why uh, the orcs are the, the place to be? <laughs> oh, I, mean, I love those guys. <laughs> <laughs> those guys are the best. <laughs> the bad, especially the bad moons. It, <laughs> people are so uh, worked up over the fucking female custodes thing. Oh, yeah, the whole Twitter. custodies thing. Uh, calm the hell down. <laughs> there are statues in golden armor. Who cares? It's just like, dude, we got... Why are you so down bad to have like all these e- extra female characters in the the Warhammer when you got the Sisters of Battle? Put the, put those bitches on display for all to see because they're badass as fuck. So I mean, one I am I'm pro femme custodies mainly because I don't think it hurts anybody and inclusion's fine. But you also mm-hmm. have Sisters of Silence, Sisters of Battle. There's a whole order of the Assassinorum that can shape shift, and they're female only. Yeah, like men, men did not of, take well to the shape chemicals. <laughs> well, I, the biggest thing I don't understand are people getting mad about lore changes. Meanwhile, uh, no one ever complains that the emperor was just on the throne because he was old before they wrote the heresy. That's a massive lore yeah, change. It, it's honestly, it's one of those things where people get, in my opinion, people just get so invested in a hobby. That mm, yeah, definitely. if somebody goes and changes the lore, it's just like, no, I was so invested in this, and now you've invalidated my opinion. Yeah, that well, especially one thing I reason I don't play Warhammer is one army costs a car payment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, like my dad's getting into Warhammer, and it's just like, okay, a, a hybrid model of 3D printing and buying. Uh, I don't a think set. we have another 30 minutes to talk about Warhammer. Yeah. You're right, you're right. So, <laughs> that, if you talk about but, Warhammer, you know, get me on here. I can talk about Warhammer. <laughs> it, yeah, honestly, that, that that's a that's another show for another time, another podcast <laughs> entirely. But uh, if y'all have. Uh, been interested and enjoyed what we do here just uh 
check out the patreon the discord the twitters leave us a voicemail and you know what we'll see you next time messages anything enjoy the beautiful day enjoy your weekend we're dungeons and talk shows we're dungeons and talk shows i need an outro (laughs) (laughs) choose your role carefully ah see that, that that's a good one